y'all. It's beginning to rain, so I'm gonna be cooking my ugly drum smoker under my patio today. This is Big Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue, and this is what I've got going on for you. We're going to make some pulled pork in my ugly drum smoker, but it's not about the recipe. I'm going to use store-bought uh, rub, a store-bought base, and a store-bought um, barbecue sauce because I got a lot of honeydew projects to do, and it's raining, all right? What this is about is showing off my UDS to you, my ugly drum smoker that I built last year. And the other channels involved are also showing off their ugly drum smokers. Most of them built them themselves and or bought them uh, custom made or something like that. I want you to check out these other channels. We're all got slightly different drum smokers, but they're all built out of a 55 gallon uh, shipping drum. All right. So, um, the other channels are Baker Barbecue. He's up in Pennsylvania. He's got a one that I think he bought used. All right, check out Carl at Baker Barbecue. Dave at Cajun Cravens. He's located about halfway between uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans or thereabouts. And he's got a beautiful drum smoker because it's got a big old fleur de lis on it. By the way, I like fleur de lis. Look at that, Saints. All right, now got Lewis. He's got a great name up in Washington. And he has welding skills. He's a machinist or something like that, and he's got welding skills. I can't wait to see the drum smoker that he built. We got River City Barbecue. He's got a custom-built smoker that he bought. It's a pretty cool deal. And we've got um, the founder of this collaboration, Kenneth at What's New Barbecue. He's a professional barbecue cook. He goes around doing uh, competitions and stuff like that. He's got a drum smoker that he bought custom-made. He wants to tell you all about it, and I want to tell you about mine, too. Hey, if you're thinking about building an ugly drum smoker, check out this video you're watching now. Stay tuned. All right, and check out all the others, all right? And I'd be admiss if I didn't say that I want to thank um, Phil at Daddy Cooks. He's not part of this collaboration, but he was a big inspiration in me building my ugly drum smoker and some of the ideas I took from him. I didn't build it just like his, but I'm going to list a link to his channel as well. So all the other five in this collaboration will be down there, and I'll have a special link to Daddy Cooks as well. Check them out. Let's hat cook a pork butt on the Ugly Drum Smoker. Let me show you how it works. This is Big Lou's um, Ugly Drum Smoker. I built it last summer, and it's getting even uglier because the paint's starting to wear and starting to rust in places, but hey, that's part of the fun of Ugly Drum Smokers. And if the drum does rust out, uh, I'll just get another drum and uh, harvest the parts and put them on a new drum. And I do plan to repaint it this summer. Uh, the drum that I got was not a food drum. It was uh, had plastic pellets in it for injection molding, and the plastic pellets were inside a vinyl bag, so the inside of the drum was really, really clean. Now, it may have had a um, rust inhibitor or something on there, but I did burn off all the paint and then repainted it like this. I put my channel name on it, and I put a Bible verse that comes from Acts 11, 9. I use Roman numbers because 11 and 9 would be off-putting for those that remember 9, 11. I didn't want to do that. And that deals with a passage where Peter is given permission to eat um, animals that don't go with the Jewish diet, like pork. And I cook a lot of pork in here, you know? So that's why I put that Bible verse on there. All right, I put uh, two uprights, one on each side with a valve. I just hosed it off so there's some water in there. That's all right, it'll come out. So there's one on this side too, and they were painted nice, but they've started to rust. It's been about a year. I just use garage handles, and I just kind of put them on there quick so they're not exactly even, but they work. Put this wooden shelf on there, I cut a piece of plywood round and put it right here behind the thing. And you can uh, see what it looks like in there. This is my back one. I open this up, I take that off, I open that up, and that pretty much just runs the whole thing. The valves up top are barely open most of the time that I'm cooking. I open them more when I get a lot of ashes. Uh, I made extra long um, bolts so that I have a lot of places to hang utensils and stuff like that all around my uh, drum. I could just hang uh, tongs or whatever on it. And uh, the lid. As I said, it was plastic pellets, so I didn't have a bung in the lid. The lid was just flat, so I had to drill holes. And what I did, I took an aluminum pot lid, and I drilled holes in it, and I lined them up like that. So as you can see, now the pot lid is kind of dirty because I've used this thing a lot. I actually haven't used it in the past two months. I got a, uh, 
the manufacturer sent me a little barrel cooker, a uh, barrel house cooker, and I've been using that a little bit. But um, I used this in mid-February, and it's right now early April, so it's been about a month and a half since I've used it. All right, I'll show you what it looks like inside right, let me here. show you what's down moment. inside my drum. I just used the um, damper hit from the pot lid handle as my handle. All right. I hang the lid on the side of the drum. Now this top rack here is about three inches. I don't know if you can see that, but it's about three inches from the uh, bottom of the lip. And I can cook sausage. I can cook uh, small potatoes or cut up something here. Some vegetables, some um, those barbecue onions like they do in those green onion things like they barbecue in Mexico. I could put those right here on top, something like that. But uh, that's the main cooking rack there. It is forgot how many inches down but it's eight inches below this one so I guess it's 11 inches down from the lid and that's the main cooking rack underneath the main cooking rack 12 inches below that I have a heat diffuser plate by the way I used all old smoky parts in this they were cheaper than whatever parts the grills fit so this is an old smoky charcoal tray and I use it as a heat diffuser rack it already has the holes in it works pretty well I don't always use the heat diffuser but sometimes I do and I'll be using it for the first four hours of this pork butt cook today uh, it sits on another old smoky grill grate that I've had for a long time but I cut out these two things when I use my old smoky for long smokes so that I can um, put charcoal in it so underneath the um, heat diffuser rack and I don't always run it with a heat diffuser I have my charcoal basket which I made out of some old expanded metal that I had on hand. Yeah, I know, that's probably stitches waiting to happen, but I've had it a year and I had not got stitches yet. And the uh, bottom of a Weber uh, charcoal grate, and I've got about four inches there between it and the bottom. Now, for my ash pan, I just reach in here, grab an old pizza plate, and that's what I use as an ash pan. All right, I'm gonna uh, move this under the patio because it may rain today. We'll fire it up, get the pork butt on it, show you what it looks like, and uh, thanks for watching. All right, let's do the uh, prep work. I'm using Guns N' Roses barbecue seasoning rub. It comes from LeBlanc's down in Gonzales, Louisiana. And uh, Dave down at Cajun Cravens lives in Sorrento, not too far from Gonzales, sent me that rub. I'm using pig stand basting sauce. I've used this a lot on my show. Uh, I usually use it in a jar, but now it comes in a a uh, perfectly good spray bottle and I'm using pig stand barbecue sauce. I haven't used this brand of Cajun barbecue sauce before but it matches the basting sauce alike so I'm going to use it. Another thing you have to do is you have to cook it. You have to cook it with a cup of that basting sauce or vegetable oil. That way by uh, cooking the sauce I don't feel like I'm completely cheating by using all three uh, store-bought rubs and sauces and stuff. All right to get the pork butt I trimmed off most of the fat looks like that. And I'm going to score it on the bottom, score it on the side, score it on the top. That way I get that rub in all sorts of little surface areas. I like to do that. And by the way, I'm prepping this about three to four hours before we put it on the smoker. All right. So uh, I did this early in the morning around six and it went on the smoker around 10 a.m. Something like that. All right. So once I get it... Uh, all scored up, I'm going to shoot it with the basting sauce. That basting sauce has this beautiful orange-red color to it. It's really good. Got a lot of good stuff in there. and It's easy to just buy it and use it. I really do like it. I've used it several times on the, uh, several of my cooks. Uh, pork shoulders and, and pork butts and stuff. And then I just put the uh, Guns N' Roses rub all over it. All right, Tell that pork butt, hey, welcome to the jungle. Here's Guns N' Roses, all right? Now it's time to get the grill thrill on now. Uh, I open up the back vent and I set my uh, these all the way open to get the fire up and then I'm going to adjust them later. I use an entire bag of Kings for charcoal, a few pieces of my favorite smoking wood and I spread them out right there on top. Uh, I'll have some left over at the end of the cook but I take an entire bag, dump it into the basket. Take some out, fill up the chimney, and then light the chimney and dump it back on there. And then we set it down in the drum, put the uh, diffuser plate in there, and then we put the cooking rack in there. Got to get the diffuser plate in the middle and put the cooking rack in, and we're ready to go, y'all. All right. I set my fence on top and uh, get it up to about 250. It's time to drop the pork butt in there. 
I just drop it in with one of those Cajun pit sticks, pigtail flippers, put the lid on, set the vents wide open just about all the time, and I'm looking for that thin smoke coming out of it just like that. All right, if two hours in and we're basting it. Now, I don't have any probes in this or anything like that. Four hours in and it's 154, it's time to wrap it. All right, so we uh, pull it out, set it in the aluminum foil, and we wrap it up. All right, I just grab it with that pigtail flipper. Now, toward the end of the cook, I can't do that anymore because it's going to fall apart. But right now, it's still good. And we just put it in there, wrap it in some aluminum foil. But before we do that, we got to hit it with that basting sauce again. All right. Just get it like that, get it on the bottom, get it on the top, and I just spray that stuff all over it. That spray bottle sure does make it easy. I don't have to use my basting brush. Then we hit it with some more of the Guns N' Roses rub, uh, that Cajun barbecue seasoning, and then we just wrap it up tight like that. Now, before I put it back in there, I'm going to have to remove the um, heat diffuser. I'm not going to need it quite so much. I could continue to use it, but I don't need it because the aluminum foil is there. And also the ashes are beginning to build up at the bottom of the drum, so it gives a little more airflow to not have it at this point. All right, so I'll put the cooking grate back in. We throw that back on. Yes, I did that barehanded. If you're asking why, it's because I've developed calluses over the years. I'm just used to burning my hands. All right, I'm putting the side dishes on, or the bottom and the side dishes, the baked potatoes and the corn. I'm just going real easy with the sides on this, all right? And they'll be ready in four hours. And then after about four hours, it was at 195 to 200. That's what we're looking for to pull it. Uh, 205 is good too. I mixed up the sauce and we're ready to go, y'all. All right. It's been resting for about 30 minutes and I mixed that sauce together. Let's take a look at it. <sighs> Looks gorgeous. All right. Now remember, I did it fat cap up. So that's the fat side. Bone sticking out right there. Who is hot? Well, it didn't come out perfectly clean, but it's close. All right, let's um, take a little bit and I'm gonna share this with my family. First to my wife, Shannon. Mm. Ladies first, you know. Hannah, Eli, all right. All right, my family likes it. I like it. Let's try this. Who is hot? hot. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, a dance. Cause all right, I'm going to get this pulled with these uh, bear claw things here and I'll uh, show you how I serve it. All right, well, you heard the testimony from the family. That pulled pork was juicy, too. Now, to serve it up, I served to put the corn like that, buttered it, and I put some... Uh, Cajun Creole seasoned on it too, but that's not shown here. Now the butter on the potato wasn't melting like I wanted because the potatoes had cooled off. But once I put that hot pulled pork on there and that hot barbecue sauce that we had just cooked up, um, that butter melted all throughout that potato. It was really, really good. If you've never had Cajun barbecue sauce before, it's kind of chunky, got onions and stuff in it. You got to try it. It's really good. I don't like doing second takes on taste tests, but this is one. I just kind of flubbed up the other one. I said flubbed, F-L-U-B. All right, this is a piece of potato, pulled pork, got that sauce. I just tasted it, y'all, it's really good. Mm. Oh, a blanc rub is good. Look, I use mesquite for the first time in a long time with pork. I only use two pieces, but I can taste that mesquite in there. I only use mesquite for beef most of the time. I usually use hickory with pork, but I can certainly tell the mesquite's in there. Um, the basting sauce is excellent. I've used it before, but I've never used that pig stand barbecue sauce. It's not a sweet sauce. It's a zesty sauce, and it's very good to serve on a potato. You may not like it on a pulled pork sandwich or something, but like that, very good potato, and I know that corn's going to be good. I've done corn that way in the smoker before. Look, I love the Ugly Drum Smoker. One of the best things I ever did was build one. Check out the other six channels. I'm sorry, the other five channels. There are six channels in the collaboration, including this one. The links will be down below to each one of them, see how they do it. Look, I like the idea of drum smokers because smoke naturally goes up. A lot of people spend a lot of money trying to make smoke go sideways, but the ugly drum smokers, good way to get good barbecue. Big Lou Barbecue, thanks for watching.